Hey there, we are actually in Austin, Texas. This is very different than my kitchen. I'm here because we're photographing a wedding and it's actually a two day event um, with a day in between. So we're gone for like four and a half days total. I am filming this because we're gonna answer questions about destination bookings. So how to do work apart from your normal location. So I have a lot of questions from some of you on Instagram and I'm gonna walk you through a few of them as we walk around downtown Austin, we're on um, South Congress, which if you're from Austin, you know exactly where I'm talking about. You can't go to Austin without coming here. And so I'm gonna answer these questions and I'm excited that you're here. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin James. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. Today we are in Austin, Texas. We are in a destination wedding and we decided why not film YouTube while we are here. So I'm answering your questions that you have about how to book destination work, whether it's weddings or portraits or branding work. If you want to shoot destination work, I'm gonna help you understand exactly how it looks to make that happen in your business. All right, one question we have from Katie Lauren Graham. She's asking, how do you, in all caps, get them? How do you get destination bookings for portraits or weddings or branding, whatever? Um, that's a great question. I would say uh, you have to be bold enough to market yourself as a destination photographer before you kind of really are one. And I would recommend like my first destination wedding that I shot I only charged them like $600 to cover my flight to Jamaica. And so I basically did the wedding for free. And I know that goes against everything I normally say, but once I had the title of an international wedding photographer or destination wedding photographer, I could put it on my website. I could put it on my Instagram account. It was worth it for me to lose the income from just one wedding or one shoot or whatever you are booking these days in order to be able to call yourself the title destination photographer. So. I, that's how I got my first one. And then in the future, um, I started using those keywords whenever I would blog it, whenever I would talk about it. Um, and I started talking about what I wanted. So I actually put on my website, I still have it on my website, that I have dream locations of where I'd like to shoot one day, like bucket list locations. Um, and that's a cool way, that's a cool way to kind of tell the world, like I want to be a destination photographer. So you have to speak what you want because if you don't ever talk about that's a desire of yours and no one ever knows that that's something you really would love to do. So another question, it's a big question, is how do you price for destination work? And I feel like there's a lot of different ways you could do this. Um, for us personally, we don't have a destination package and then put travel expenses on top of that, but some people do. Um, some people charge extra for destination and then they just add on the other expenses because they're gonna be out of office longer, they're gonna be gone longer, Just they just know if I'm gonna do destination work, the bottom line package price is gonna be more expensive. Um, but a lot of people I know just charge the normal package price and then they add expenses. Like for us, we add rental car, lodging, and airfare. We don't get into the weeds of like a stipend for food. Um, and that's just our decision. We just don't wanna make it any more messy. And we feel like if people are spending money to pay for our airfare for two of us and lodging in a rental car, that's a lot and that's enough. And it's kind of a gift to be able to travel. Um, so that's, those are like the two options. So you can either increase your whole package price um, and you could even build in travel into that. I wouldn't recommend that though, because if you built it in and then all of a sudden you look at airfare and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like way, way more than I thought. You could just really hurt yourself that way. So for us, that, that was another question from Stephanie. Um, do you include the, the travel price or do you like add that on later? And so what we've done, we've, added, we've done a few different things um, before. It depends on how far out they're booking. So if they're booking in fall and we're traveling with them in the spring and we're like flights are available, then we'll go ahead and look at flights and get an estimate on flights and we can even book the flights then. But sometimes people book over a year and a half in advance and so we can't even book flights at that time. And so we'll do an estimate and we'll do the estimate on a higher end. And then if there's a big cost adjustment when we actually book the flights, then we will bill them or reduce their package price based on what the actual cost was. Um, and so we don't necessarily build in our travel expenses into the package um, like as one lump sum, we will basically do the package price and that's listed out. And then we list out the approximate travel cost. And then again, if we need to book that later on and can't book it right then, um, we'll adjust that up or down depending on what the actual cost were. Another tip with that is to make sure you book your own travel, which is advantageous for you 
like anyway because you want to have your own points you want to but like for us for example michael would hate it if our clients were booking our flights because then we don't get to use our delta points and he loves his delta points so um we also we did a wedding i think it was in putacana and we let the couple book our lodging because they had this big package and they're like oh we'll just do everything for you we got there, no one could get a hold of them. And so when we got to the lobby, we just had to wait there for an hour because no one had information about who we were, what name our you know account was under. It was, it was a mess. The other thing that was a bummer about that is because they booked our travel for like our lodging, um, when we flew into this tiny airport, we kind of depended on them in the hotel for a shuttle, but they hadn't looked into shuttle times and there wasn't a shuttle right away. It's like, no, no, every, every, wedding we've done since then, that's destination. We have taken all of that into our own hands. Even if there's a block of rooms, we will try to book it ourselves. It's always in our name. Flights are always done by us. And it just keeps everything simpler, cleaner. And I just feel like there's less room for error um, when you're in charge of all of your travel details. Okay, so this is a good one. This is from Suzanne. Suzanne, I have great news for you. She's like, can you use travel as a tax write-off even if you're a non-wedding photographer? Yeah. Oh yeah. You, that's like the best part of it is like you, you get to go to work, you get to travel, you get to see somewhere new, someone pays for your expenses. And then if you have any additional expenses, you can write them off. It, it's kind of like, um, a, a give and take. Some people are like, well, I'll just pay for my expenses, make sure people book me. Uh, and then I'll just write off on my taxes. You are going to lose more money that way because I, I feel like at the end of the game, your taxes, it's not always like, you spend a hundred dollars, you take a hundred dollars off. Like you have to talk to a CPA about exactly how much you can write off. With travel, normally it's like really close to a hundred percent, but just to be on the safe side, it's better business practice to actually have your clients write off the travel expenses. And then anything else that they don't cover, you get to write off yourself. So I would definitely go the route of having your clients pay. If you find yourself in a situation where you're booking travel for the first time, like you're booking a destination session for the first time and you find yourself thinking, okay, well, I, I really want them to book me. I'm afraid they won't if I tell them they have to pay for my travel. Um, I would always try first. If you really want to do it, you really want that title, like I'm a destination photographer, then try to get them to book travel. And if they're not interested in that, and they're like, oh, that's just really over budget. I do think it's appropriate then to say, I'll cover my travel um, if you'll pay the full package price. And then moving forward from that booking, everyone pays your travel expenses. Um, but again, I don't, we don't write off like, we don't include our foods, like a food stipend or anything like that. And we don't write off all of our food, but if we go on a significant trip, like right now, when we're in Austin, we're gone for four and a half days. So we're using our business card for any meals that are like above a certain amount. Like maybe if it's above 50 or $60, um, there's three of us here for, on our team. Um, we will charge that. But if we're going to a gas station to buy a drink, we're not going to use our business card for that. Our CPA just would kill us. It's just, it's just a little too small to write off. It just kind of gets a little nuancy. Okay, let's do some rapid fire ones. Uh, how do you book destination work? And why would someone book you versus someone local? It's a great question. Absolutely everyone who books me long distance has known me through Instagram, through the blog, through Facebook, through social media. So if you are wanting to do destination work, Normally, you'd have to have a presence on social media or you have to know someone locally that wants to have a destination wedding. Um, the reason people book me to have me photograph a wedding at a resort with a photographer is because a lot of resort photographers are not the style that modern brides and grooms really care to have. So, I mean, sometimes they're great, but not often. Um, do you need a visa to go to certain countries? Yes, but it varies. I've honestly never gotten a visa. I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying that I've never really had a situation where I had to have one in order to shoot. If you're wanting to do more work and you just can't seem to get the opportunity to do it, but you like to travel and you're already traveling, like for example, my family went to Florida. If I, if I was really wanting to become a destination portrait photographer or a destination wedding photographer, I may offer and post on social media, hey, tag your friends who are in Tampa area I will do one free engagement session while I'm there with my family and that's how you get the ball rolling you could do a styled shoot but I think it's best when you work with a real couple give them a real experience and then word of mouth travels from there how do you communicate travel costs or an inquiry whenever we have a destination inquiry I always respond with these are my package prices and then we would create a quote for you that includes travel um, if you're interested interested. So I don't like respond to the initial inquiry and say, oh, this is your location. Here's all the travel costs. First, I want to get to know them and have more of a chance to win them over before I just throw out some big numbers for flights. 
Someone said, is there any place you won't go? Um, if, if there's a country that doesn't seem super safe right now, I probably wouldn't go. Um, there are some places that I've shot before and I'm like, you know what? I don't really care to shoot there again. Um, I honestly shot a wedding in New York City in, uh, in Central Park and it was so crowded and so stressful. And I even found like nooks and crannies. It was in the dead of winter. And so I, I, I said to myself, you know what? I don't really want to do that again. Um, but I would shoot in other parts of New York. So yes, there are places where I have shot before. I'm like, I don't really want to go back. Um, and then there are other places where I just have no desire to shoot. And all of this has changed since I've had kids. So before kids, Michael and I were like, we'll travel anywhere. And now that we have kids, uh, it's really got to be awesome location. Okay, thanks for tuning in and watching this episode. It's a little different than normal, but I'm glad you followed me to Austin. And if you want to see our video next week, because we come out with new videos every Thursday, you can like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Do I say it? You say it. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.